I think it might be Eddie Merckx's fault. He was rumoured to have said that the key to going fast when cycling is to just ride your bike, ride your bike, ride your bike. But for many of us, we end up grinding out the same sort of rides week in, week out, whether that's the club run on a Saturday or commuting to and from work Monday to Friday. And yet, despite putting in the hours, we don't actually go any faster. No, so I guess the question we're asking is, if you train less, can we go faster? The first point is to really question what it is you're trying to achieve every time you go out and ride your bike. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to stop with a social ride, but what you should focus on is trying to increase the variation. So going out for three days in a row and doing the same ride at the same uncomfortable pace is actually highly unlikely to be achieving anything other than making you tired and making you therefore a little bit slower. Yeah, that's right. Assuming you're doing around six hours a week, rest between those sessions is your friend. If you decide to jump on your bike and do a two hour recovery ride, well, you're just kidding yourself. And if you make an effort during that two hours, well, then it's two hours wasted. Unless, of course, you just enjoyed yourself, which is absolutely fine, but it wasn't the focus of this video. You should really make the most of that downtime in order to then enable you to hit those really high peaks where you're actually pushing much harder, and that is what is going to be getting you much fitter. Time in the saddle doesn't automatically make you fitter at the end of the day. Yeah, and lack of rest and poor recovery is also the undoing of many cyclists. Riding that middle ground when you're not going hard enough and you're not going easy enough either. As we've already mentioned, you want to avoid doing the same rides day in, day out. So a great tip is to try and do your hardest sessions when you're at your freshest, so the day after your recovery day. Now, save that for those interval sessions where you're doing anything up to about five minutes. Because you're a little bit fresher, you'll be able to get your absolute maximum out and really hit the right intensity. So your sprints, your anaerobic sessions, anything up to VO2 max, really. Yeah, and then on your second day, on another fresher day, why don't you think about putting those longer efforts to work? So the 12 to 20 minute efforts uh, with a short break and then go again. Yeah, that's really going to polarise your training. Now that is not a new concept, but it's super popular and with good reason, it's also very, very effective. And by doing that, doing your high intensity stuff midweek when maybe you're a little bit shorter on time, you can still do your longer endurance ride on a weekend and perhaps you add in the social element by joining your cycling club. So basically, we're avoiding that middle ground where we're just thumping on the pedals. Right, you're not going to improve overnight, I mean, that's a given. But the more and more you push your limits, the more you'll find yourself being able to go hard when it really matters. Yeah, that high intensity training is really gonna stimulate your body to adapt in a far more time efficient way than if you were just plodding along in that aforementioned middle ground. Yeah, but remember that recovery and rest days are really important. You want to allow your muscles to recover enough so when it goes hard, you can go really hard. But I would, at around three to four weeks, put in an adaptive week. This way, you can lessen the structure and focus more on the fun. Yeah, just ease off on the training, I guess. As much a mental break as a physical break, but this is the week in which you will notice that you're actually improving. When you remove the training stimulus, your body recovers, and then when you step on the gas the week after, you should notice I'm sure you'll notice that you have just got significantly fitter. So now that we've ditched those junk miles and focused more on hitting those high intensities, we can now go out and smash our PBs on any ride or in any segment. Yeah, and I reckon that because you're a little bit fresher, you'll probably enjoy it more as well, not to mention be more motivated for when you really do step on the gas. And the other thing to take from this is that you don't need to feel guilty about sacrificing other aspects of life as well. Didn't this all sound 
too good. Is there no downside to this? Well, not really, no. I mean, if you're a professional cyclist, you had all day every day to train, then yeah, you would probably want to do more hours, but then you've got more time to recover from it. So the principle remains the same and you will ultimately reach a plateau. So some weeks you're going to want to do it harder than others still, but no, it's a great way for most yeah. people to train. Sounds ideal, doesn't it? Happy days. Well, these are a lucky find, weren't mm. they? Now, make sure you let us know what you think about this. How comfortable are you with the idea of riding less, but yet getting fitter as a result? Get involved in the comment section down below. Yes, and if you did enjoy this video, then give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to watch a video on how to get the most out of your training, then why don't you click down here?